Kali Linux Services Configuration. So today we're going to talk about services or demos. They are programs that run as a background process and they perform many functions for the system. We will cover some of the most important services like SSH, PostgreSQL, and Apache. When we talk about configuration, the main advice I can give to you is read the documentation. Read the package documentation from the maintainer. Uh, for example, uh, it can save you lots of time and avoid you some frustrations when things don't work. So read it, please. <clears throat> and a good place to start is the one that I'm going to show you here is like a slash. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll do an ls first slash usr slash share slash doc and slash. So let's see what we have here. So here are all the packages that that you have installed in the system. So let's pick one here, uh, probably the one they're going to talk to today, so it's going to be easier for you. Uh, let's see, I think we should have uh, like Apache 2. Uh, let's see, yeah, Apache 2. So for example, Apache 2 here, as you see here, is one of the packages that I have installed here. So if you do this again, if I go um, Apache 2, 2, and the ls it will show you a couple of things and you should always start with the uh, redmi so there are multiple redmi's here so this is uh, news this is redmi for backtrace and this is redmi for debian uh, red for multiple instances so read that so keep cat one here uh, so let's try to do this and then i'll do cat and let's pick like a red red me dot multiple instances okay sorry for that oops that's why that's why it's not working Okay, readme dot uh, multiple instances. So here we talk about uh, what is this about it, to explain. So we have we have to be familiar with this stuff here. And uh, if you if you want to know what files are included on a specific package, you can use a different command. I will clear here. You can use um, um, the command dpk. Oops, dp kg slash l and the package name. So we're going to Apache, Apache 2. Apache 2. Okay, so those are all of the files that are under that package, right? Um, another good place to read for documentation is the etsy, everything that you can find on the etsy directory, okay? Uh, you can also do the uh, command like a dpkg slash s and apache2, okay? And this command will show you the, the metadata and possible recommended or suggested packages that can help you a lot, okay? You may find uh, sample configurations files or templates um, under this other directory here. So if you go to slash uh, ls slash usr slash share doc <clears throat> and uh, watch it too. Uh, let's see if we have a folder examples. Yes, we do have here. So then you do slash examples. So yeah, we have a couple examples here. Like a patch it to monitor um, the init script and the setup instances right this this can also help you a lot with that um, you could um, you could use them to help you to create your own configuration files for example okay so now let's take a look on uh, one particular services the SSH for remote logins so 
clear this out as well. And well, SSH, right? SSH, right? SSH allows you to remotely log in into a machine, and transfer files, execute commands. It's an industry standard tool uh, and service, the uh, SSH D, right? For connecting to machines remotely. The open service, this package here, right? Open, open services open SSH uh, package is installed by default but SSH services is disabled by default and it's not started during the boot so if you want to manually start the SSH this is what you have to do so we have to do system control start SSH okay that's it if nothing happened it's a good news no news is good news in this case. Uh, or you want to configure it to start at boot process. And then you have to do system control um, enable SSH. Okay, now every time my system boots, it will automatically uh, enable the SSH for us. Now let's take a look on this configuration file. It's um, so ls um, c oops SSH uh, and the SSH D underscore config okay it's actually a file so we can do the cat directly look at that we have um, a lot of information here uh, that can help you so let's take a look on its configuration file so let's let's use nano for that nano uh, slash FTC slash ssh slash ssh d underscore config okay so this is the configuration file for ssh and the default configuration disables password based logins for root users so you need to set up ssh keys with ssh keygens to use it you can also extend this to all users if you go to these parameters here so let's see uh, it's Password. Let's see if we can find here. Ta -da -da, host name. Okay, this one here. Password authentication. Um, and I set this to no. So if I set this to no, okay, if I set this to no, uh, then I'm going to extend the um, the we're going to disable the password based logins for you. So uh, all users with this who have to use SSH keys in order to, to authenticate and passwords with only username and passwords uh, will not, authentication user only username and passwords will not be uh, allowed, okay? Uh, there are other things we can, we can check here. For example, uh, the port, right? By default, it uses port 22. Uh, but you can change this uh, to the port that you want. So let's confirm uh, what's the port of menu. So look at this. So port 22, okay? Uh, that's the default. If I, if I want, I can change the port that I want here, right? But just make make sure that I'm not conflicting with any other ports um, that are already in use in your system. And to apply this uh, settings, you just have to uh, save the settings. I'm not gonna save anything here. But you can save the settings, and then you're gonna have to uh, run a system CTL um, reload SSH, and then it's going to be reloaded with the new system. Cool. Okay, now let's take a look on the PostgreSQL. So PostgreSQL is a database server. There is, you know, no much uh, applicability by itself but it's used by many other services that store data. So what happens is that those services will need access to the database server over the internet, and they will need you know, authentication credentials to connect to it. And that's how PostgreSQL can help us. We can configure it to create databases, user accounts, and set up proper privileges that we may want to grant the users to the database. And this is done by Obviously, right, the same. So we're, we're getting used to this, right? That's about services. Uh, this system 
control uh, start post Chris SQL and we're gonna start the services done it's installed PostgreSQL listens for incoming connections on TCP port 5432 of the local host interface on and also on Firebase socket. And all of this can be configured adding the, the uh, PostgreSQL.com file. So you can go to uh, ls.exe.postgreSQL uh, uh, Okay, and you have 11. Okay, yeah, that's the file. Uh, PostgreSQL conf. So if I do this right now, main main PostgreSQL conf file, I can do a cat here and see what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. So this is the configuration file for the Postgres. Uh, we should look for listing address for uh, the addresses, uh, the port for TCP port and Unix sockets directories that relates to the file based sockets. If you open uh, pg underscore hba com file, so let's see what is it right now. Uh, yeah, the pg, you see there, pg. Let's take a look on that. So if you look at this, uh, here is where here is where um, you can define who is allowed to connect on each socket and how they authenticate. Okay, so let's do an exercise, a quick one. Uh, I'll clear this out. Uh, let's create users. So to do that, you're gonna do uh, su slash post press. Okay. Now you're gonna do uh, create user minus p. Uh, the minus p option is um, it will ask the, the function to create uh, create user right to to query for a password. So it ask you for a password ask you after creating the user. So create user asking for a password and the username will be this channel Ferrari. Okay, then I hit enter. So now it's asking me a, a password, right? Um, if I did not use the Minus P, it will not ask me the password. Right? I put just ABC123, enter again ABC123. Okay, now what I can do is I, uh, I have to create a database. So I'll do a create uh, DB minus T, that is the uh, T minus T is for the template, and then I have to reference what template, right? I, there is a template created, but it's uh, template template zero oh, template zero uh, and then I use minus e utf slash eight uh, and this is just uh, to enable to use Unicode strings so I want to be able to use Unicode strings right um, and then uh, minus o is just um, to define, so who's going to be the owner of the database? So the owner will be Luciano Ferrari, and the user will be Luciano Ferrari. Okay, that's it. That's done. That's cool. Now to test if uh, we can uh, connect to the database over the socket listing on the local host as uh, Luciano Ferrari user, so I would I would just uh, have to to do this. So I would do uh, so PSQL minus H for host in which host the local host and then minus U for user which user Luciano Ferrari Luciano Ferrari then it's asking me for the password for Luciano Ferrari we define ABC one two three and then that's it look at that so I sell connection protocol uh, TLS one dot three and the cipher the bits and compression is off, and you see that the prompt now changes to uh, Luciano Ferrari. And you can do more stuff here if you do help. You can 
we can issue some commands here, SQL commands or uh, p SQL commands here, or type quill to quit here, quit, okay, oh, slash git man. okay. All right, that was great. So let's move on now to uh, Apache, okay. Well, that's clear now, so starting a new chapter here. Um, Kali Linux already comes with the Apache web server uh, uh, with the Apache 2 package that you already mentioned, and it's disabled by default. So to start it, you just have to use system control uh, start Apache 2, okay, and look at that, it's asking for authentication, right? Authenticated, and then you got it. Perfect. It's simple like that. Uh, I'm not going over details for Apache, but it, it has some uh, models that you can enable that are that are not part of the main packet, like PHP or SSL. Uh, but again, we're not covering the details for this on this session. So what what we can do now is uh, talk about uh, managing services to complete this model. So you saw how to use some of the services here, like SSH and Apache. Uh, Postgres, um, SQL, and you see one thing in common is the use of this command system control, system CTL. And this command is also used to, to, to monitor a service or to know about the status of a service. So if you want to control or to manage the service, uh, you always use this. So you do system um, CTL and then status and then the name of the service. So let's start about Apache 2. So it talks about uh, what's going on here. So it tells me that it was loaded. Uh, what is the, uh, uh, some references here. The vendor preset is disabled. It's, the, the, it's active and running since this time, one minute. Um, the main PID, the task is, and it, so it's useful information. I can do that for any service that I want. So I can do that for, instead of a patch, I can do it for the post, uh, pull grid SQL oops and then it can tell me that it's also uh, loaded active and running how long and the status is success and etc uh, as we did that for the SSH I can also check the SSH as well it's active and ro running and loaded okay uh, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoy and see you next time.